Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about nucleophiles and electrophiles. So what is a nucleophile? In organic chemistry, nucleophiles are going to be your electron rich thing. This is going to be your atom or molecule that has lone pairs. It's got pi bonds. It's the thing that has the currency of organic chemistry, the electrons. That means you got money. You need money to do things in life and in organic chemistry, where the electrons are the money. So, something with lone pairs or pi bonds. And nucleophile stands for nucleus loving. So this guy, when he's going to bed at night, he thinks about the nucleus. And we want to think of the nucleus as this positively charged thing. So if nucleophiles love the nucleus, and we know opposites attract, that means nucleophiles like things that are either delta plus or cationic. So nucleophiles are going to attack, attack, and we attack things with an arrow in organic chemistry, where this arrow is showing us where the electrons started. They start at the electron rich thing and where they're going. And the nucleophile is going to go towards something that is delta plus or cationic. Now this delta plus slash cationic thing is your electrophile. So your electrophile is going to be the thing that the nucleophile attacks. So this is going to be the E minus poor thing. Yeah, so let's do some examples. All right, guys, I thought we'd play a little game, a little game called who's the nucleophile and who's the electrophile. And then we're going to draw some arrows and see if we can predict how this reaction would proceed and see if we could draw the mechanism, which are both very important things that you must be able to do if you want to get a good grade in this course. Step one, we want to look for an atom that's got lone pairs. And the best case ever is when you can identify an atom with a negative charge. So lone pairs, pi bonds are good too. Best case is if you see an atom with a negative charge, which is the same thing as having lone pairs. It just has an extra electron, so then it is anionic. So here we can see, oh, this OH is an anion. It has a negative charge. Nucleophile, our E minus rich thing. Now we have to ask, okay, Nucleophiles love the nucleus, so going to my other reagent, after I've identified this guy as the nucleophile, I'm going to go to the other reagent to find my electrophile. So I say, okay, can I identify something that is delta plus or cationic? If I look for electronegative atoms, I can see that I have a chlorine, which is a halogen that's sucking electrons towards itself. So there's a dipole moment that is making this carbon the carbon, a part of the carbonyl group, delta plus. Oh, 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 nucleophiles like things that are delta plus. This is my electrophile. Boom. So the last thing we need to do is draw an arrow starting at the nucleophile, and the head of the arrow must point at the electrophile. So two in, and we're going to attack with one of those lone pairs. That's why I'm saying two in. So now we have a dilemma. Right now, I'm going to try to find the leaving group. And I'm going to say, okay, well, the chlorine is definitely my leaving group, right? But pi bonds are weaker than sigma bonds. Therefore, the two electrons that are actually going to go up first are the two electrons in the pi bond. Two up. So I'm going to have an intermediate here. So let's add in some more steps. So step two was look at the other reagent and find something delta plus. So look for a carbon or an atom attached to, for example, a halogen, CX. And step three was draw in our arrow from nucleophile to my, my electrophile. And now step four is draw any intermediates if necessary. So draw intermediates and then step five is always going to be the leaving group leaves so 
I am on step four. I need to draw my intermediate. So since my OH group, specifically a lone pair on the oxygen, attacked that carbon, I need to draw a new bond. O, it will still have two lone pairs and it's still going to have that bond to the hydrogen. But now it's going to have an additional bond to that carbon. The carbon is still attached to the chlorine and it now has a single bond to the oxygen. And if I draw in the oxygen's original lone pairs in purple, and then the pi bond that broke, those two electrons will be in blue. We can see that this oxygen will gain a negative charge. So this would be my intermediate. And the reason this is my intermediate is because we have a charge and we have a potential rearrangement that could occur where these two electrons are going to go two in, two out. So we can achieve step five, which is when the leaving group leaves. And what do we get? We get that double bond back and we still have the bond to the OH. So we get a carboxylic acid. All right, let's play the game again. This time we have a little bit of a different situation, but the rules are going to be the same. Going back to my steps, step one is look for my nucleophile. So I'm looking for some atom with excess electron density. Oh, I see an oxygen that is negatively charged. Perfect. Easy, you're my nucleophile. Step two, I must identify my electrophile on my other reagent. So here I could, for example, look for a halogen. Halogens are delta minus. They're going to pull electrons towards themselves, creating a dipole moment that is going to make that methyl group delta plus. That means it's in an electron deficit. So it could be attacked by a nucleophile, for example. So step three is drawn my arrow. And since opposites attract, the nucleophile is going to attack the electrophile. Two in, two out. So here there's no intermediate stage because we didn't encounter a situation where the carbon, for example, was bonded to something via a pi bond where pi bonds break first. Here the leaving group just directly leaves. So we skip right to step five, which is leaving group leaves. And you get your product. So let's draw our product. So I'm going to redraw in the phenyl group. O, oh, and now two of those lone pairs didn't move. One of the lone pairs created a bond to the ME group. So I just go bond ME. And then plus, looking at the three sets of original lone pairs, chlorine, three sets of lone pairs, plus the two electrons in the MeCl bond that broke and went on the chlorine as a lone pair in the end. So we get a Cl minus. Oh, and I forgot to really explicitly say, oh, this guy was my electrophile. We're going to play one more game and then I've got to go. I'm actually in my car right now and I was bored. So I'm filming this. Hopefully the quality is still okay on my audio. So step one, nucleophile. Any atom with lone pairs, pi bonds, and an atom with a negative charge is going to give me a really easy nucleophile identification. Here, I can still see, oh, we got an atom with lone pairs. Perfect. This is my nucleophile. Going to my other reagent, step two, identify my electrophile. Oh, I see a literal cationic carbon. Easy. That's my electrophile. So then, step three is always going to be the nucleophile attacks the electrophile. Two in. Why is there no two out? There's no leaving group here because you're attacking a carbon that's in a deficit. So here we have to generalize and say, okay, well, I know that, you know, rules can be broken sometimes. There's not going to be a step five here because there's no leaving group. This carbon was in a deficit. So this O used one of the lone pairs to make a bond of that carbon and it is still attached to two hydrogens and it still has the other blue lone pair. So now we can see though, drawing in those two electrons, the oxygen actually gave away one electron to this carbon because the carbon gained an electron, that is why it is neutral now. So the oxygen lost an electron and if we lose an electron, we become cationic, lec gen. Lose electron, become cationic. So this oxygen would have a positive charge. 
that is it that is all hope this video was helpful and yeah just this was just a short sweet little fun thing once again this was really spontaneous i was just in my car but i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you had a great day and i hope you learned something let me know if you have any questions in the comment box down below